Harry's fans, it's Race Day Top 5 with me, Frank Five. Happy New Year. We are three weeks until the new season of NASCAR 2019. Get your engines ready to fire up because Daytona 500 is three weeks away and we are all prepared and all excited for a new season. I know I am and there are a lot of topics discussed before we get into the new season. But first, before I get to that, I want to say everybody that's subscribe to my channel and everybody's watched my channel over the years i hope you're all excited to hear me bring some insight to the sport this year there may be a few changes at the beginning maybe the middle um there are some things i want to bring into the show and i'm not going to share it until i have it all figured out and bring it in but until then i'm here and i'm ready to give you guys all the insight on the nascar season for the cup series as well as expanding in trucks as parts of the season and what to expect for the whole year in general so let's get started with our five topics of what to expect for the 2019 cup season let's go Number one, we have a new aero package for the bigger tracks this year with the exception of Daytona and Talladega, but I'll get into that in a little bit. For the bigger tracks like Atlanta, California, Michigan, Charlotte, Texas, you name it, only like the mile and a half to two mile tracks, we've developed an aero package. NASCAR announced last year an aero package which will allow the drivers to be uh, slowing the horsepower down, reducing the speed, re increasing the back spoiler, and increasing the racing as far as making it tighter, like kind of pack racing i would assume i mean for tries like maybe michigan and california that'd be lovely uh for the mile and a half we'll see how that goes especially on a worn out truck like atlanta which is really not going to be the test it's going to be the next week in vegas and race three of the season but i'm interested to see how this aero package will fare i think it'll help so obviously the big teams it'll fare but i think it'll fare some of the lesser teams because i believe what nascar's trying to do here is we're trying to bring in maybe a new manufacturer in the sport like maybe i don't know nissan acura volkswagen mercedes you name it anything anything we want to try to you know do this aero package to help maybe bring in a manufacturer next year or two years from now at some point we want to try to bring a new manufacturer who knows dodge may return but i don't know about that so we'll see what the aero package does for the season i'm hearing a lot of positive comments how people say we think this could increase the racing this year and some people have their you know negative opinions on this but everybody has an opinion and that's totally fine number two this upcoming daytona 500 will be the last time we run restrictor plates beginning in the spring of Talladega, we're going to have a different aero package for the cup cars that according to NASCAR, it's going to keep them in packs, but the pack racing could be different. It could be different groups of packs. Like, a, you know, you have like maybe 15 cars, then another 10 cars, and then another uh, 15 cars. It could be like packs could be divided into groups. Like, you know, we did that stupid group qualifying thing in, for the restrictor plates in 2014 and the Daytona 500 in 2015. So we'll see what happens, but... um. Hopefully, it'll, I mean, I don't want the cars going all by themselves at 200 plus miles per hour. You saw what happened to Bobby Allison at Talladega in 87, why we went to that restrictor plate. So hopefully this works. And if it doesn't, then we may need to go back to the restrictor plates. I'm not sure. Number three, different driver changes for the season. Drivers have changed teams after they either came to the end of their deals or their teams shut down. Obviously, the team shut down for Royal Racing, Martin Trex Jr., had left that team at the end of their last race of the season, Homestead, and now he's going to Gibbs to drive the 19 car with Bass Pro Shops, increasing their sponsorship by eight races more than they did last year. So 24 races and eight races for auto owners insurance. So four races without sponsorship for Martin Church at the moment, but I'm sure he'll, he'll get some. Uh, he's going to be driving for Joe Gibbs Racing, but he's been driving Gibbs cars with Furniture Row Racing's alliance with them the last few years. So it's really no difference for, difference for Martin Truex Jr. Plus, he's got Cole Pern with him, so they're going to win races and probably be a championship threat this year. Daniel Suarez, who was the original driver of the 19, has now transitioned to Stuart Haas Racing in the 41 car. And I think, I believe, Suarez could probably have the year that Eric Almirola had last year where he came to Storehouse Racing the first year, he won his first ever race and it was made it all the way to the round of eight. Now, I think Suarez will win a race and make the playoffs. But I don't think he's going to advance out of the round of 16. We'll see what happens. But Suarez, I think, is in for a much competitive season this year, folks. For all the people saying, oh, he's going to wreck that equipment. Please stop hating on Suarez. I happen to like him. And what he does for, like, drive for diversity, what he and Bubba Wallace do, is remarkable. And that's what we need. More fans sitting in the grandstands. That's one thing that we want to do. And for Suarez, for a, for a Latino to come all the way from Mexico to America and win a championship three years ago, I may remind you, he can do it. And I have a good feeling he's going to have a solid season. And the other change as far as drivers, Kurt Busch, who was the driver of the 41, now goes over to Ganassi at the one, replacing Jamie McMurray. He's going to 
run the Daytona 500, and then he's going to transition to Fox Sports coverage of NASCAR. So I believe Kurt Busch is going to have a solid season. Now, he may take time getting adjusted to the Camaro because he's never driven this before. He's driven Chevys, but last year he was in a Ford, and he has not been in a Chevy since 2016, and he's never been in the Camaro. But I believe Kurt Busch will break out this year with Kyle Larson after Ganassi didn't win a single race last year. And then, obviously, fan favorite Matt DiBurito De Benedetto is driving for Levine Family Racing this season in an alliance with Joe Gibbs Racing. This could maybe be... It, it, it may start off a little bit rough, but I think they'll find their strengths as we go down the season. The, Levine Family Racing could be the next front row racing. I mean, they never know. Matt DiBenedetto is in for a really good year, though. Folks, he's going to be fun to watch. Number four, rookies. We have four new rookies for this season. The first one that I believe is going to be rookie of the year, Daniel Hamrick now driving for Richard Childers Racing as he's replacing Ryan Newman, who is going over to Roush. Hamrick will be driving what the car that Newman drove, but instead of the number 31, the 8 car is back for the first time since 2009. Of course, everybody knows Dale Earnhardt Jr. is famous for driving that car, but also remember Eric Almarola, who drove that car in 2009 for the first few races before they had to shut down their sponsorship, and Mark Martin did as well when they had U.S. Army sponsoring that car. So Hemrick will be driving the 8 car for Richard Childress Racing, and I think based on the, the aero package, like I mentioned, could bring Richard Childress Racing with Hemrick and Austin Dillon up to the front campaign for wins and top fives more often this year. Daniel uh, Ryan Priest is driving for JTG Doherty Racing, replacing AJ Allmendinger, teams up with Chris Buescher, and an alliance with Hendrick Motorsports Cars and Engines. Could make JTG Racing very competitive, and Ryan Priest has showcased the talent from being a modified champ to driving for the Xfinity Series, won two races in his tenure part-time with Joe Gibbs, so I believe... Brees is in for a pretty solid season this year, so he'll he'll battle his talent as the year goes on. Matt Tift, who most people may not know, uh, if you're new to the sport, Matt Tift had developed a brain tumor in 2016 while driving part-time for Gibbs and had to sit out the night race at Daytona for the Xfinity Series that he was supposed to be in. But he's battled through that. He drove a full season with the Xfinity Gibbs team in 2017, then drove for Richard Childress Racing Xfinity Series last year, and now he's moving to Cup this year for Front Row Motorsports in their third entry, driving number 36, based on, you know, looking up to his mentor, who is most notably drove, known for driving the 36, Kenny Schrader. So I believe Tiff's going to be having a pretty good year. Plus, Bronner Motorsports ran really well last year. And, you know, races where, you know, they didn't start out well at the beginning, but when some of the big teams went out, they stepped up into the top 15, top 20, which is huge for a team like that. And Tanner Berryhill, who will be driving for a bike race in the first African team in NASCAR, they're going to run the full season. Unfortunately, they don't have a charter, so they're going to have to qualify every race this year without a charter, including the 500 the entry list has not come out, so I don't know how many entries we have. So we'll see if Banner, Barry Hill can make the 500. But I think this team's going to have some stepping, you know, beginner steps. But they'll, they'll find a way in the NASCAR. And finally, number five, Jimmy Johnson. Will he put behind the worst year of his career and get back to Victor Circle? He didn't win a single race last year, which shocked me. And I'm not a huge Johnson man, but I respect the man and what he's done. He's won seven championships. The same amount as the King and the Intimidator. We all know who they are, Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt. So, Jimmy Johnson's got new changes this year. He's got a brand new sponsor, Lowe's left after last year. And he picked up Ally Financial Bank and Online Banking Service, which, believe it or not, used to be GMAC. And if people remember, that used to be a Hendrick sponsor for Rick Hendrick's late son, Ricky, and Brian Vickers. So, GMAC coming back, but as Ally Financial is huge for Jimmy Johnson and Hendrick Motorsports. And Jimmy Johnson's also working with a new crew chief this year as Chad Knauss left the 48 team at the end of last year. He's going to be crew chief for William Byron. Kevin Mendering, who was Elliot Sadler's crew chief in the Xfinity Series, will take over duties for Jimmy Johnson's crew chief this year. So hopefully Jimmy Johnson can get the Victor Circle. If he does, he's going to probably win two races at the very least. He may make, he will probably advance to the round of 12, but we'll see how this goes. But I hope you all are very excited for the season. I've been waiting, going through, you know, the winter, cold winter without any racing for the lead, passing for mid-pack, battling for a championship. We're going to have that in three weeks, two weeks counting the clash, which I'm excited for that, and uh, get to see what we do as far as how the racing is going to be at Daytona and how the handling is going to be. I'm very excited for the season. I've got a lot of optimism. I've got a lot of optimism about my guy Chase Elliott, who after finally breaking through for his first career win last year and then winning two more in the playoffs... He'll be a championship contender, I, I could assume. But my prediction for the championship this year, who's going to be your champion? I believe, after winning the most races last year and not doing it, I believe Kevin Harvick will make up for the one that probably should have been his last year. No disrespect to our defending champion, Joey Legal, who very much deserved it. Kevin Harvick will break through his champion this year and be a two-time champion. And maybe after that, he may 
think about his career choice. But I'm excited for the season. I hope you all are too. So subscribe, like, and join me on this journey into a brand new year NASCAR. And I'll see you soon.